Welcome, it's UK Cowboys TV, it's season one episode number 22 and uh, yes, normally we do a victory Monday but the Cowboys uh, were playing in the UK over here, uh, they finished at half past four in the morning so uh, we were all on the late shift, me and Jamie actually were in fact talking to the late hours How are you feeling Jay after it all, you, you feeling a bit more awake than yesterday? Uh, I, I'm used to now just living on lack of sleep. We're back onto American times, aren't uh, we? So it's all good. <laughs> it's like as soon as the NFL season starts, we've all got to make sure we've got plenty of coffee and no sleep. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, we've also got Graham with us. He hasn't been on for a while, but he's finally with us. And of course, we've got a very special guest with us. He is, uh, oh, we seem to have lost Jamie. Bring him back now. Um, but yes, we have... Uh, Mr. Ken Hamlin, who played safety for the Cowboys um, just over a decade ago. Um, he did, of course, while he was with the Cowboys, make it to a Pro Bowl. You can see the Pro Bowl jersey behind him. <laughs> and, uh, uh, of course, he was uh, a captain for the Cowboys as well. Um, yeah. But it's like to have you on the show. You, you, just so you know, Ken, you are, in fact, our first Cowboys present or historical uh, player to be on the show. Oh, beautiful, man. That's that's, that's, a, that's a great thing, man. I, I Well, I appreciate it. Number one is always good. Number one is always good. Yeah, you have been bestowed the uh, the gift of being our very first ever uh, player. Um, oh, but um, you've got, um, as, you, as you know, to talk Cowboys, um, and obviously to get a player's perspective as well on things. Um, yeah. But on the weekend, the Cowboys played the Eagles, um, and they won 37 to 10. Uh, so big win there, winning on all three phases. So what we'll do yeah. is we'll we'll kick this off uh, as we mean to go on. So what we'll do is we'll ask you all. Um, I'll start with you, Graham. Who was your offensive MVP uh, of this particular game against the Eagles? I think you have to go with Ezekiel Elliott. Um, just back to back to genuine Cowboys football. You know, running the ball taking time off the clock, dominating on the offensive line. Um, good to have Tyron Smith back as well, which helped. Yeah, um, as long as we can get Zeke going, we're in good shape. Okay, yeah. Jamie, you're out, offensive MVP? <coughs> yeah, same as Graham, Zeke, again, I think that's a <laughs> consistent running game now, and it? he's consistently over 100 yards, and he, yeah. they just couldn't stop him, could they? Uh, yeah, Zeke. Shout out to the all line though, because the all line stepped up again this week as well. Oh, definitely. I mean, is there anyone in particular for you, Ken, who who stood out in that game? Who's your your offensive MVP for the Cowboys? Well, I think I think we would go to all the same direction. Of course, the offensive line, um, you know, giving the holes for Ezekiel Elliott to run the ball. I think when they have that happening, the offense flows a lot better. You, you'll you'll see a different type of deck at, at quarterback. You'll see a different type of receiving core. Everything starts to open up a little bit more once Ezekiel gets going, and, and he starts to to demand that that presence and that attention that he, that he normally has. Yeah, and then obviously with Zeke being a running back, they, he, I, I mean, I'm sure when you see a running back coming out of the backfield, that gives you. I've been obviously playing the, the safety position nightmare seeing a guy like that coming towards you. Hey, a guy that can a guy that can run like he can run has the power that he has. He reminds you of like a Jerome Bettis with with, with way more speed, um, but but has the the swift the swift type of moves. Guy has the power downhill, but he also has the home run type of speed that he can get downfield and really make it make it a problem on the secondary on the defense it, it, altogether. All right, so I mean, moving you know because we say we're we're talking about the O line, um, I mean, the battle of every game always begins at the front in the trenches. Uh, now, going before the season started, we were we were getting told about how great the Eagles uh, D line was, uh, especially when you had you know guys like Fletcher Cox, especially in the middle there. Um, with that being said, along with uh, our wide receivers, you know, with the outfield blocking, yeah. which particular O lineman? And I'll ask you first, Ken. Uh, which particular uh, offensive lineman uh, stood out the most? I mean. For me, it's got to be the guards, but who who was it for you? I mean, you got Martin, who, who I think is one of the best, if not if not uh, the best offensive lineman that they have. But I, yeah. I, I look at it as that 
when, when it starts with him, I think everyone else, I mean, they got some guys banged up right now, whatever. So I think that he's a guy that, um, you know, that sort of keeps everything together. Um, the center position is always a, a position to me that I feel like it's sort of, you know, from there, everything trickles down, even though we have some talented tackles. Um, but I, I think that, I think that uh, you can't just have one. First off, let me say that, because if you have one and the rest of them are, are playing subpar, then it's definitely going to be a long day. But, um, but, but I feel like it, starting in the middle is, is where everything goes well for, for this yeah. offensive line. I'm with you there. Do you both feel the same as well, Graham, Jamie? Is it a collective or were there any individuals that stood out? Yeah, I, I think I agree with Kenny. A lot of the runs seem to go down the middle and we had a lot of confidence r- running the ball down down there. And if it works, you keep going, don't you? And you, you punish the, the team for, for giving them kind of them kind of looks. So, yeah, I'll go with the guards and down the middle, yeah. Yeah, I think down, down the middle is, is certainly our strength at the moment. But I want to give a shout out to Tyron Smith, particularly yeah. stepping back in. You know, you can see that he still wears um, his braces and all that kind of stuff. And he yeah. did get beat yeah. for one sack. I think Derek Barnett got got to Dak one time. But him for him to to step in when we really need them most. I mean, I think you found that with with Cameron Fleming struggling. I think for Smith to come back in in such an divi- important divisional game, to yeah. help, I think that's that's got to have a special mention. I think big ups mm-hmm. to, to Tyron Smith. I think that shows you. I think that shows you just how important this game was to for him to to come back, mm-hmm. knowing that with that injury he's not all the way back ready to go. For him to come back and fight through it, that shows you what type of importance he felt like this this game was, and the team felt like this game was. Yeah, I, I mean, obviously you can talk from experience. I mean. You must have obviously paid, played games through a lot of pain as well, so you must have known. <laughs> yes, you know what? It's fun after the game is over with because you know you made it through. Um, but, but definitely something you have to you have to deal with, and and you know it's going to be an issue, so you got to just fight through it. Um, you know, once you put the suit on and once you put the uniform on and you see you decide to play, um, you know you got to throw all the excuses out of the window and just try to do the best you can. Yeah, yeah, totally. So, I mean, talking, I mean, we're going very heavy on the run game here, but in terms of, of Zeke Pollard and Dak, all of them had um, a very good running game uh, against the Eagles, getting first downs. So would you say in order, because obviously all three of them had a, a, a terrific game, especially Pollard, because we was talking about this in the, at the pregame show about mm-hmm. we could understand why the Cowboys aren't utilising a guy like Paul Ardmore, you know, because he, he's an explosive playmaker that can obviously spell Zeke because uh, he's got the talent there. Yeah. Um, but we seen him on a fantastic run where it looked like the play was over, but somehow he uses a bit of, of, of feet magic and he makes a first down. Do you think then that in order for the Cowboys to win, they've got to they've got to be on top form on their ground game in order to win? What do you think, Ken? I- Oh, I, I think I think it all it all flows through the running game. Um, you know, you 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 definitely see the the flashes of of what I would say greatness from Dak at the quarterback position. Um, mm-hmm. You know, when he's when he's on the play action, that and that's the biggest thing in play action. They are they are a deadly offense. When you think about having to worry about Dak <clears throat> Dak handing the ball off to Zeke, and when he doesn't, being able to have those openings behind the linebackers, and uh, you know, because they're 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 so worried about the run. Uh, so, uh, of course, the running game is going to be important. I think that also with Pollock, it, it's going to be more important with him getting those carries, and especially later on in the season, to spell Ezekiel for a, a late playoff run. So you're not having him just taking all of the, the carries, but you still got a guy in there that can actually give you the yardage that you want to get. And he's showing that every week. Um, you, yeah. know, you, you really don't know what you're going to get out, but I mean, he's showing every week that he can be accountable to be put back there and let Ezekiel get some rest. Yeah, agree. What do you think, guys? All about the running game? It's um, it's a big testament to Dak that he, he managed to pick up 50 yards and a touchdown in this game because it seems to be yeah. that if anybody wants to go two high safeties and you know block out the passing game, <clears throat> I'm going to beat you up the middle with 10, 10 yards on the first down. So it's, mm-hmm. it just adds another dimension. Yeah, It's almost um, not getting too carried away, but it's almost the only Cam Newton type idea where if you want to go if you want to defend the deep ball you want to uh, forget about the middle linebacker I'm going to take off I'm going to go and get those 10 important yards and take some pressure off of Zeke so 
Um, if we can get all these combinations working well, then it, it only bodes well for the offense. It's really, really good. Yeah. yeah. Jamie, agree? Uh, yeah, totally. I think it makes us less predictable as well. Because mm. when, when, we, when Zeke first came in, it was kind of, you could tell it was a, a run first kind of offense. And now we've got a really good group of receivers that are getting a lot of the ball and they're making a lot of yards after the catch. Um, so it, it kind of, it, it opens it all up, like I say, and it open, makes, opens that playbook up and, and keeps defences on the toes. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, I mean, there was something me uh, and Lauren and, and Brian were talking about in the pre-game show last week is, I, I, I wonder after what we've seen, you know, with, with how that ground game came into play against the Eagles, do you think then perhaps maybe they'll start doing more uh, 20 and 21-man personnel with both Zeke and Paula back there? What do you guys think? I, you know, I, I, I don't know if, uh, if that's going to trick too many people or whatever, especially I think that because of you have some – you got some talented receivers, you have yeah. guys that can go out and actually make those plays down the field. That's sort of that's – you, you got to respect both, both levels. You can't okay. you can't just play for the run. You can't just play for the pass. But I think that understanding that you have a, a guy in, in Zeke, Ezekiel Elliott who's in the backfield, you got a, a Cooper, you 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 got um, Gallup, Gallup, and all those guys that can actually play the receiving core. And you bring in um, uh, what's his name from Green Bay last year. Uh, you, you bring in I'm... him as well as yeah as as another receiver. You have a respectful level on, on all ends. So. To change it up and to have something something like a twenty personnel where, where you coming in, I, I don't know if it's going to really change this this style of offense anymore. Um, yeah. But but it, it might it might actually limit what they can do in, in the different type of sets they could have. I see where you're going. Yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, it's a nice segue as well because obviously um, moving to the the wide receivers um, receptions. Obviously, Amari Cooper. We had Gallup um, getting his his fair share. Ram Cobb, Witten. And even Austin uh, on that fantastic yeah. uh, sneaky play uh, where it looked like it was going to be a jet sweep and cut back out. I mean, I, that, that to me definitely had, um, you know, that wasn't a call by Jason Garr, I would not yeah. say. <laughs> yeah. um, but how important was it? Because before uh, that game, we, we were getting told stories that Cobb and Cooper were going to be out. So how important was it that they both ended up playing? Well, like I said, like I said earlier, I mean, with, with Tyron Smith, those guys understand the importance of that game. Um, you know, yeah. you're a little bit, you're a little dinged up. You got to go to the guy. You know, it's always the question of, are you injured or are you hurt? And, yeah, um, yeah. And that's sort of that's sort of where they got they got to have a good gut check and, and understand like where they are because this was a big game. I mean, this, I mean, not not even just I mean because of the standings and everything, but just a physical and ment mental type of of advantage you're going to have on a guy in the division that you're going to. You're going to be battling this out all season to try to see who's going to win that division. So, and this is going to be one of the, this is going to be the team that's going to be battling to try to win the division. So, this was a game that, that those guys, if you can get out there, get out there. You, you got to be able to play because we need all of our weapons, and they needed all of their weapons for this type of game. All right, Jake, great. Yeah, I think it's a it's a big step and a big tick to their their ability to get on the field, especially after. Um, the third loss in a row, I think, to step out against the Eagles and show that they want to be Cowboys and they want to get the win, and it's particularly at and um, big credit to their, their personalities and for Cooper to do what he does best, especially with that grab, um, the the deep grab, when he just he just accelerated, I can't remember the, D, the DB, but he accelerated away from him, caught it with um, you know the edge of his fingertips and hauled it in. That's that's the difference between good and great receiver, and it was, it's really really special to have him back. Yeah, and it's it's a divisional game, isn't it? And not <coughs> all the games all the games are important, but this is bragging yeah. rights. I, I think I think the coaching staff would have had a, a hell of a job saying to them to you are playing this week because, like you say, as you said, it's a testament to to their ability and to the kind of people they are that they're willing to put their bodies on the line, but you want to be known as the best in your division. So you're going to go out there no matter what. All right. Um, then moving on to our last point scorer is one of uh, three records that happened uh, this weekend. One of them being Dak as 
overtaken Roger Stobach in uh, rushing touchdowns. He's now uh, the leading Cowboys rushing touchdown scorer. The other record that was broken this weekend was Brett Maha's 63-yard field goal. Now, uh, I don't mean to sound funny. Like uh, <laughs> I probably couldn't even fire a gun 63 yards. Um, <laughs> But uh, he's actually broken the Cowboys' record. Um, I mean, is the opinion, and it's actually one of the questions from our mailbag from Owen, is the opinion on Brett Maha after this weekend's performance perfect on the day? Three of three field goals, four four extra points, and he breaks the Cowboys' record. Opinion changing, do you think, or do we need to see more? No. <laughs> he's still... An- I know we touched on it a few weeks ago. Yeah. He's still very dodgy from 30, 40 yards where you need your kicker to be. Ice, yeah. veins, and it's like he's backwards. He's, he's ice from 60 yards, but he can't, can't yeah. keep close. <laughs> it's weird. Well, listen, for, for my fantasy football, he's doing <laughs> great. He's doing me great in fantasy football. So, <laughs> so, I saw how the game was going. I'm like, come on, baby, let's go. So, you know what? It, but, but but you're right. He he actually, his accuracy, when it's closer, is sort of shaky. And and you've seen that all throughout the year for, for, for a lot of kickers to where they're in that 30 to 30 to 40 yard range. And it seems like they aren't they aren't precise enough in that range to where they can they can put it down and be consistent with it. And I, and I don't know. I don't know if, if because of the extra points have moved back that everything is not a chip shot to them now, so they they, they have no relaxed time. But mm-hmm. it just seems that it's getting a lot a lot more difficult. And in that rotating that rotating door, you're going to see that a lot more in that kicking position. I mean, the only thing I can think of, right, why he makes the long kicks is he takes the pressure off himself. I think he thinks to himself, because the week before he did a 62-yard field goal, and like you, uh, I don't know, you know, because I obviously I'm not in his head. I don't know his mentality. But the only thing I can think of is he's thinking to himself, well, if I miss it, it's not such a big deal because people would be like, well, he missed a 63 yard field goal. And because he's taken the pressure off himself, he ends up banging it over. I'm going to agree with you, Mike. I think yeah. it, it may be in my head, but I think there are just as many extra points missed as field goals. And it's almost as if that little bit of extra pressure, I must get this, I'm expected to get this, that sometimes gets in their head. You know, I, I, I tend to agree with you. Um, for for the half past nine game our time, I watched the, the Vikings and even our own ex, Dan Bailey, he missed a couple of, he missed a couple of field goals. So it's it's not just Maher. It's a, mm-hmm. It tends to be across the league. We just, we just have to focus on Maher. But um, yeah. you know, just just you know, do we take a couple of delay of games to move them back ten yards, a couple of <laughs> games, and then we can go from fifty yards and nail it? Perfect, <laughs> perfect. You know, <laughs> I like that. I never even thought of that one. Yeah, why um... not? Run the clock down as well. Just go in. Uh, but yeah, but uh, since we've got um, a special guest safety with us, we'll move to the defence. So um, I'll ask you first, Ken, on the defence uh, in this game, who is your MVP? So we've done the offensive, who's oh. the defence? Well, you know what? I, I don't know if I could pick one guy out. Um, yeah, I know, the yeah. One thing, the, one thing, the one thing that I think is that, <laughs> is that with this team, it, it, just like we talk about with the offense, whatever, the front and how they do, I think that this team rides, rides well when they have a front pressure. You got a linebacker core that is talented, probably as any linebacker core that that um, that is around the league, and mm-hmm. those guys are going to continue to get better. I think that this team, uh, you know, of course the secondary, you, you, I look at it like this: we got corners that can play, safeties that are that are are finding their way to the ball, but they got to yeah. they got to definitely step up when when it gets to clutch time. We got to step up a little bit more, but I think that this defense. Really started early too. Of course, you, you score early on offense, whatever. But I think this defense had a, had a mentality of starting early, not coming out flat, making sure that they made their presence known early and often, and, and it showed in the game. Okay, uh, Graham, you got a defensive MVP or a unit or play caller? Yeah, I've I've got a I've got a particular Xavier Woods. Uh, yeah. Really, really impressed with Xavier Woods, particularly the interception. But there was I don't know if you guys remember. 
I think he got flagged for a hit on a defensive player. Um, I, th- I think the ball had come loose and he, he, he lit the guy up. And yeah. it just, I don't know, it, it struck a chord with me in that this is our house. And if you want to come across the middle of the field and you, you want to come and, and take points off of us, we're going to light you up. We're going to let you know. And it, it just... It, after after the three losses in a row, it just struck a chord with me that we're the Cowboys and we're not going to take this lying down. So big ups to Sarah Wood for that. I, I thought he, he really took, made his mark on the game uh, with that. I mean, it was a foul, but I can get past it. OK. Jamie? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go with two comments. I think the first one was I've, I've been very critical of the front seven. Um, yeah. Didn't yeah. see him over the last few weeks. Not enough pressure, and they were just on it this week. They they had that that hot boy's name this week. That they was on it. But um, I'm going to go with um, Jordan Lewis, the sack on Wednesday. Uh-huh. I guess yeah. he he came off the mark so quick it was unbelievable, and it it just it just showed how how much they wanted this win. Not that they don't want any other win before, but they like say it just it just showed that. They wanted to turn around that free game and um, losing streak and mm. nothing was going to stop them. So, yeah, for me, that one. Yeah, and I think the Jordan Lewis sack it came at a good time. It was perfect play calling as well and well-designed play. Um, but for me, I'm going with a complete defensive backs because there were so many plays. A lot of what the front seven were doing was off the back end of what the defensive backs were doing. Um, there's one with a My- Miles Sanders uh, on third down, which could have totally changed the game. And Miles Sanders had broken through. Um, but luckily for us, Jeff Heath comes flying and just filling that hole. It was perfect timing. And, and the other one for me as well was um, Byron Jones with the Zach Ertz catch where they actually called it in. Um, but I don't know if you go back and look at it, Byron, uh, Byron's coming over. He sort of gets into Zach Ertz's leg just enough to knock him out so he couldn't get that second foot down. That is perfect play. You know, he got there just in time and he flew across to get to that. I think, you know, defensive backs played, I think, phenomenally for me. Um, But uh, let's look at the the defensive, uh, the defensive line, uh, looking at it. Um, Another part of the Eagles' strength was their O-line. And I still think it's a pretty decent O-line, to be honest with you, that the Eagles have. Was a lot of the results, though, that the D-line were getting, I'll ask you as well, we may as well go with you first, Ken, was the results that the D-line were getting, um, fumble recovery, sacks, the lot, was that a result of just brilliant play calling, excellent execution, or was it the Eagles O-line failing to capitalize? Well, I, I, well, I, I would say it's more of the actual defense putting pressure on that offense. I think that, you know, of course you have, uh, you know, Demarcus Lawrence and, and Robert Quinn yeah. coming off the edges. you got those guys putting pressure. Of course, the front is, 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 is building off of that, too. So I think that they actually enforce their will on, on the Eagles' def- offense than the offense would ever just not performing. And, of course, the Philly, Philly has a very talented offensive line. And for that mm-hmm. to for that for that to take place, you see that these guys they had they had a motor that was definitely a lot more than what what Philly could handle on, on this on this game. So I think that it was more on the defensive line really putting pressure on that offensive line and just putting them in positions to where you know of course you and you start backing them up a little bit. You put them in second and third and long. You put them in positions that they don't want to be in. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, Jamie. Yeah, totally agree. Um, this was probably the the first time this year that we've seen the defensive line of last year and that we've, we thought that it was going to continue through. And, and I think, I say, a real, I say coming up against a really good O-line and putting in that kind of performance is going to put a lot of confidence in their own ability to, to take that next level. Um, and I think we're going to see this more going down the, down the stretch now. Yeah. Graham, are you with us there? Or do you I think, think it's so, already? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think, I think Carson Wentz looked uncomfortable all night. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the the Robert Quinn trade has has been huge for us, particularly in this game. Yeah. And I think um, to make that to make that squad look that uncomfortable for most of the night, I think was quite impressive. Um, even if even if they don't have big Trent 
because he's um well, that's that's the Redskins I'm talking about. Um was was Jason Peters involved last night? Uh, on on yeah, Sunday night. Uh, Sunday. On Sunday. Sunday. So. Um so back, back in chair. To, go, to go and take advantage um and to make you know a, Car- I mean Carson Wentz is a lot of them see it as underrated, but I think yeah, I think he is a particularly good player and he looked flustered. Um and it was really, really rewarding to see. Mm-hmm. Agree. So then uh, the last one, which is a uh, point that I want to make, and then I'll just move quickly on to the mailbag then so we can wrap this up. Um, just one of the quick ones, and me and Jamie spoke about this a few weeks back at the great length. We we're talking about the turnover battle um, with the Cowboys. Um, in terms of turnover differential, the Cowboys actually ranked 24th. Uh, um, last week, but this week they come away with four takeaways. Um, so not only did we win on all three phases, they win a turnover battle. Can anybody point at what's changed all of a sudden that uh, at this point now we're level peg in? Turnover differential at zero, we we're minus four. Um, but after that weekend now, we're, we're level up. I mean, you probably attest to this more than anything. Uh, or be able to point it out, Ken. Can you think what's changed over the the beginning of the season up until all of a sudden against the Eagles, where we 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 just go turnover crazy? Well, first you got to look at what happened last week. Um, yeah. When you have a when you have a week like that, I mean, you, you you're either you got to come out strong. You got to come out. Yeah. You got to come out with, with a little bit of extra because of because of what you put on the field the week before, and and against the opponent that you put it up against. So. I think that it was it was more than just I mean of course you have the attitude of that you have Philly coming in and and some of the words that were saying said from the head coach and everybody else that uh, you know going to that week so it, it was a lot of things that were building up for this game and of course it's the vision of game whenever Dallas plays Philly New York or the Giants it's going to be yeah. some some blood blood boiling whatever so and, and that makes it fun so I mean I I think that this was a game that they wanted to come out. You, you're at home. You wanted to come out. You wanted to show your fans and show everybody that, you know what, last week wasn't us. And I think that's what you sort of see more a, a lot of, too, is that, you know, the guys just wanted to come out and fly around and, and, and make some plays. And, of course, I know Chris Rashad, those guys, whatever, they they, they, they gave them an earful. Um, <laughs> you know, all week, so so I, I know they got plenty of that. So, you know, you want to get your coaches off your back, too. That's the best way to do it. <laughs> so, I mean, <laughs> It, you you must have been in a few locker rooms where uh, it gets a bit heated. Can uh, especially defensive back coaches and defensive coordinators get uh, a bit, should we say, verbal with you when they get a bit frustrated? Oh. And you know what? And the crazy thing is, so so Chris Rashad was my teammate in Seattle. Uh, okay, we were both there together. So yeah. I know that he has that fiery side anyway. And then and then to see him on the sideline and see his passion just pouring out. Uh, oh yeah. We definitely. I mean, I've had some some interesting and some and very very fiery type of coaches. So uh, <laughs> I know how it can get. I know how it can get pretty interesting uh, in the locker rooms and on the practice field. So yeah, it. it, it I can guarantee that it, it was some things, whatever, that were handled behind doors that that sort of let them know, um, you know, where they stood. So uh, I mean, just as, as a personal question, Tim, when it, it's going wrong. Uh, and the coaches are shouting at you and, and ranting. Do you feel more, um, what's the word I'm looking for, saddened that you're letting the coaches down or the team, which is bigger? You know what? Uh, it's, it's all about the team. Um, you know, you, you got your brothers that you that you go to war with every day. So, I mean, you, you definitely don't want to, uh, you know, be laying an egg and, and really not playing to your, to your level, uh, you know, while you're out there. So it's all about checking yourself and getting back to the way that you normally play the game so that you can you can hold them accountable and they can they're going to continue to hold you accountable so i think that's the biggest thing you, you want to make sure that you can you know you you got your guy on your side and the guy on your back whatever you, you're definitely holding your end up okay yeah um i think then the the last uh, point i'm going to make before we move to the mailbag is we've got to give it up as well to whatever the medical staff done this week <laughs> I mean, mm. I don't know. Oh, they're the real this, MVPs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, you looked at the start of the week, uh, the um, you know the injury report, and especially some of the key players, and then all of a sudden for them guys to be on the field and 
contribute the way that they did. I think I, I, I need to know what what drinks they're dishing out down in Dallas. <laughs> <laughs> And we got to, you got to keep that low. You got to keep that in-house. You got to keep that in-house. Just in, case, just in case we need it again, we got to make sure to keep it in-house. But they definitely did a great job. I mean, you know, for, for all the guys that were on the injury report and for the injuries that they had and, you know, I mean, to be able to go out there and, and not just to be on the field, but to actually perform and, and show up. I mean, you, you, some of the guys were, were, like, doubtful to actually play, and then they come back and you see them on the field and they actually put in – put in some work and actually show their worth for this team. So, I mean, that's, that's huge. And of course they got to continue that because the season from this point on, I mean, I mean, it's been a few weeks, whatever that anybody could probably say they were a hundred percent and it's going to be for the rest of the season of you yeah. having guys battling it out and really just fighting through injuries. And so you'll see, you'll see the heart pouring out a lot more throughout the rest of the season. Definitely. All right. So we'll move to the mailbag. We've got a few questions here, so we'll rip through them. The first question is from uh, our co my my co host Lauren, uh, who runs a pregame show later on in the week. She's asking, uh, "How do you think Doug Peterson's feeling?" This? So, <laughs> I know that that's going to be a slide dig, but I thought I would keep the question in because uh, I is one of the questions I thought I posed to you, Ken. Is uh, on a week when the team loses, what's the head coach like with the team? Oh well, you know what. You can you can get a little bit of both. Um, I, I've had a Mike Congram who, at one point after you lose, uh, you don't want to be anywhere near him. And then you have a, 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 a the same coach who he understands what the team is going through, and so he's going to take a different direction. And that's really what that's really why what makes these guys you, you know either a great coach or just a good coach is understanding your team and understanding what they need for that moment. Sometimes you need a hard, hard-nosed coach that's going to just get it, get at you, and get you to push. And other times, he has to understand. You know what? Let's bring them together. Let's, you know, let's sort of not, not, not baby them, but understand that you know what they're going through a tough time right now. We, I got to build them back up. Nah. All right. Any of you guys got anything to add on the Doug Peterson uh, experience of how he must be feeling this week? I, I think you see it in every sport, don't you? It's, yeah. It. It was a big week to anyway. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's Eagles, it's Cowboys, it's it's Pride, but the, the the team are going to be up for it. But you always kind of look for a little edge, I suppose, don't you? And more often than not, when a coach comes out with it, or even a player comes out with a comment like that, yeah, yeah, it's and they always sometimes seem to come out with egg on their face, and mm. the ones that make the um, the comment always seem to come out on the losing side. So I think. Yeah, I hope um, somebody like Jason Garrett doesn't come out with something like that down the down the stretch and <laughs> really <laughs> with that face. It's karma realignment, as they say. Yeah. It definitely is. Yeah. If uh, if I was if I was the Cowboys media, I would print out that quote from Doug Peterson and staple it to every single locker and just yeah. just let that be your motivation. I don't understand why head coaches do it. They put so much pressure on themselves for a throwaway comment that the other team will use to maximum ability. I, I don't understand why he did it. OK, uh, we'll go then to the last question. We'll skip it. Uh, there was a couple of questions, but I know that you, you, you've got other things pressing, Ken. So we'll just go to the last question, which is from uh, actually the show's number one fan, Ken. Uh, he's uh, saying that he thinks the biggest question is the play calling over the last three weeks. Now, he knows, obviously, as we all do, that we've had some key players injured, uh, but yeah. the play calling seemed bland. Um, can we put a finger on why all of a sudden things are different? Do you think perhaps Garrett was taking a bit of the rain and now he's giving it back to Kellen Moore? You know what? I, I, I look at it as if you look at the three weeks where, you know, the struggle was was happening, that I think that mm-hmm. the second half adjustments weren't being made. I, I don't know, you know, they, or they weren't being, uh, uh, you know, just effectively, uh, you know, put put on, into the game. And, and and now in this game, you saw that first half you come out, you come out on fire, and the second half you actually you don't you don't settle. You actually come out and you start you, you continue what you were doing. I I'm not sure who was whether it was you know you know, the head coach that Garrett that that was taking over the reins, and then now it went back to Kellamore or Kellamore had it. And didn't understand how to get that sort of motor going and get things rolling, and then they flipped it back. But one way or the other, they have to understand that you know when you come out of when you come out of a, a first, first half that is flat, 
you have to make sure that you've got everything. Understand what the defense is doing to make you make you struggle. Understand what mm. you're doing to make yourself struggle as well, and try to find yeah. a way to make to make that adjustment. And uh, and those first those couple of weeks where the struggle was happening, it didn't seem it didn't seem to be taking place. But in this game, you sort of saw that. You saw from the first half, and you saw from the second half a team that was actually just continuously to make steps. Yeah, Graham, you got any comments? Last minute comments to make on play calling, and then we'll finish with Jamie. I don't really, I don't really see any major changes. I think if you if you win with Jason Garrett as head coach, you have to accept you're going to lose as the other game. You know, it, yeah. I, I don't think it's healthy for a team to chop and change all the time. And I, I don't know if there's anything major that's happened over the past couple of weeks, but it just seems to. It's it's a young team, particularly on defense, and I just. I just think they have to try and let Kellen Moore settle into his role and not put so much pressure on who's calling the plays and so on. I know that um, my understanding is that Jason Garrett is the kind of game day manager, so he he oversees everything. And by not stepping in to call plays, he's able to see certain things that a coach might not when when they've got their head buried in the playbook. So um, I don't know if anything's changed over over the past week or so. I think it's just... With a partic- with a developing team, you're gonna you're gonna have a few bumps along the road, but um, it worked. It worked on Sunday, and mm-hmm. we're all the better for it. Yeah. yeah. All right, uh, Jamie, take us home. Uh, are the uh, the Dallas Cowboys real? Are they a playoff team? Oh yeah, without a doubt. Um, yeah. I say I think we just had a couple of bumpy bumpy weeks. Everyone goes through a rough patch throughout the season. It looks like we've had ours. We got back to a bread and butter, which is the run game. We, we've got the passing game flowing. The defence was on fire. Yeah, I think this last week showed this is what we're all about. Excellent, yeah. And there we go. There's a, a post-game wrapped up nicely. It's, uh, as we say, in the past few weeks, we've been doing the big heel. So this week, it's just uh, the big win, as we say. So, uh, Ken, <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, for joining us, uh, it's been a pleasure. We hope to have you on again, um, whenever oh, yeah. you're free, mate. Um, hopefully, talking more Cowboys. Maybe we'll get you later on in the season as we get past Thanksgiving or something somewhere down there. Hopefully, hopefully we're talking more wins. So I mean, that's, yes. that's a lot more. Fun. I, that's, that's what that's we're hoping. Fun, yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I appreciate you. I appreciate you having me on, man. I enjoyed it, and uh, I always love talking some Cowboys football. So we can definitely do it again. Excellent. Yes. Thank you very much, Ken. It's been a pleasure. All right.